This is the Saturday Morning Serial Podcast with your host, Amanda Ann. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Saturday Morning Serial. I'm Amanda Ann, and I hope you all have had a good weekend so far. I know we did. We actually went to the movie theater for the first time in over a year, and we saw Cruella. And I'm here with my boyfriend, Mike, and we're going to talk about it. And this is going to try to be spoiler free, so you should be good. (laughs) One thing I do want to say, it was very nice to get back into a movie theater again. And the movie theater we went to, you had to order your tickets ahead of time and also order your food ahead of time. Obviously, wear masks in the lobby and the bathroom. But overall, it was great. And honestly, it was kind of sad. We were... It was like us and another family in the theater. So people, I think, are still kind of not going, which is kind of sad. But for us at that theater, the safety protocols and the cleanliness of the theater was great. And I can't wait to go back and see another movie. But Disney's Cruella is now in theaters. Also, you can do the premiere access on Disney Plus for $30. So we did decide just to go to the theater and see it, obviously. And it stars Emma Stone, Emma Thompson. And this movie was a ride. And there was a lot of unpredicted twists and turns in this film. We start off with a flashback scene and then we jump forward how many years? 10 years. 10 years, which I don't know if the characters looked, they, they looked older to me. <laughs> they, they very much did because we were meant to believe that uh, Emma Stone and her minions were about 10 to 12 when they were children in the flashback scenes and in the jump forward it takes place 10 years later and they look to be about in their late to early 40s the 30s um especially the dog got really got around really well for being like a 10 year old dog yeah because i know when my dogs were 10 they, they they wouldn't do stairs they wouldn't do up and down on the couch and this dog was like the indiana jones of dogs and was just like that's funny you say that, cause yeah, I that was distracting for me, cause I was looking at the dog the entire time. Like, you don't look old. Like, you just look like you aged like three years at I the will, most. <laughs> I will raise the stakes and say not only did he look not old, but he also didn't look very real at times. Yes. And the animals, the CGI animals, were very distracting. I agree, especially the little dog. A little dog got away with a little bit more because I don't really know what a little dog looks like and moves around like as well as I do like one of that one of those bigger dogs like Buddy was. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's talk about Emma Stone, her performance, and we love Emma Stone, especially in the Spider Man movies. We love. I've been a fan of Emma Stone since I saw her in Easy A. Uh, I really don't care for Super Bad. That was her big breakout role, but Easy A, I really love. I love her amazing Spider-Man as Gwen Stacy. Mm-hmm. I love her in Zombie Land, and I, you know, and every time she hosts SNL, I gotta watch that because she's just generally a funny person, and she's she's a great performer. Um, and this was very much a, a Joker esque, uh, Joker esque, Harley Quinn esque dark role for her, and it's one of the darkest characters she's played. I got yeah, I got Harley Quinn vibes from her a lot for some reason. She's portrayed as, too, having, like, some mental... I I feel like she has, like, you know, they touched upon a mental disorder of hers. Like, bipolarism could be argued in this. Um, maybe multiple personality disorder, but there's... There's, uh, flack in the mental health community, whether or not that's actually a thing. Yeah, because Cruella actually goes by Stella... Or is it Estella? It's Estella. Estella as, like, a good girl... And that's who we are initially introduced to. And she's just this really quiet, reserved person. But Cruella is her, uh, like, other personality. And her mother, at the beginning, was just like, don't let your Cruella out. You have to keep her in. So we see her going from being Estella, morphing into Cruella. And she believes that's who she's meant to be, is 
ultimately Cruella. But overall, Emma Stone did decent. And I was telling Mike, I know sometimes American actresses, actors, when they try to do a British accent, you can tell. But her British accent was pretty good. It was like dark. It was villain. I honestly thought too, Glenn Close was narrating the beginning. But it was Emma. So, and speaking of Glenn Close, I was actually seeing, because I noticed in the credits she was an executive producer, and I was really looking for her in this film to see if she would appear. So let me know if you guys spotted her in the movie. I personally did not. Yeah, I, I uh, Glenn Close is very much, uh, she's like a masquerader, and she'll just pop up in movies, and you won't recognize her. Mm-hmm. I remember I watched Hook. And it blew my mind when I found out that Glenn Close actually played Smee. Because <laughs> that's totally a dude with facial hair, but it's Glenn Close. So I didn't pro- know that. props to her. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Huh. You learn something new every day. <laughs> but yeah, overall, though, Emma's performance was okay. I mean, I don't know if I... She's really not Cruella in real life because she's just... she Her personality just seems so, like, down-to-earth and relatable. I personally like her SNL sketches. I think she's hilarious. But overall, she did okay. Yeah, you know, there's... I, I guess there's really nothing brought to the table as far as, like, a woman playing crazy people has... I feel like, you know, Harley Quinn and Cruella and just that level of insane and crazy, there's really nothing new to the table brought in this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very Harley Quinn-like. And I feel like, too, Disney was just like, Emma Stone, she's a big name. And then they go, Emma, can you do the laugh? And Emma could do the laugh. Okay, you're hired. I don't know. Maybe I could be wrong. But well, I, what you have to think about, if, if it wasn't Emma Stone, who else would it be? You know, it couldn't be Margaret Robbie. It couldn't be someone like... Mm-hmm. Emma Stone had the range to do it. Like, you yeah. wouldn't imagine. Plus, all the other great female actresses are already eaten up by other Disney princesses, right? Mm-hmm. Like Emma Watson and uh, whoever, so, whoever's going to play Ariel next. and So many Emmas. Yeah. And speaking of, let's talk about Emma Thompson as the Baroness. And I love Emma Thompson. She's one of my favorite actresses out there. I really just love British actors because my dad, he was, he's really into BBC and Doctor Who and the Sherlock's and, you know, those kind of shows. So I kind of grew up and, or I've always like heard them. And I grew up with Harry Potter as well. So those actors always appeared in those BBC shows as well. But Emma Thompson, you know, she's just a very well ranged like, very broad actress, and she can go from being Mrs. Potts, for example, in Beauty and the Beast, to this crazy woman (laughs) in Cruella. So, she had that part down. I felt like she was the best performance in that movie. Uh, I've all felt been there, done that to me, because, you know, it had very much seen, like, what's that movie with Anne Hathaway and... The, the, the other fashion icon who's... Devil Wears, no. The Devil Wears Prada, yeah. yes. And who's in that? Is that Glenn Close? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it seemed very much done before in that light where it's this woman who's trailblazing in this community that she, in her profession and she's just very sharp and witty and very rude and condescending and I had kind of seen all of that played out before in other movies and other mediums and... Yeah. It was just it was just there. She was just there for me. Yeah, fair enough. And overall, I, I do appreciate the fact that Disney did want to take this approach to the backstory of a villain. We've seen that with Maleficent and I mean a non Disney thing, Wicked, the Wicked Witch of the West. So prequels of villains, that's a popular thing. People love villains. I I love villains. I'm always interested in how a, a villain came to be their story because normally a villain is brought up with like a tragic backstory and a lot of these villains they had something tragic happen to them to cause them to be who they are now and uh well emma well um Cruella's tragedy is very much the death of her mother much like other disney mm-hmm. villains and it very much sets out her narrative from that point is to find the person 
that she deems responsible for her mother's death and to bring them to justice. Yeah. That was just her motive the entire movie. And then, like I said, Cruella was unleashed and she just stuck with it. Now for the rest of her life, she's just like, this is who I am. And she loves fashion and that's who she was meant to be was just this crazy fashion designer who (laughs) is she finds herself to be very comparable to the baroness and the baroness is actually a really top rated fashion designer in london and cruella works for her but then they start bumping heads and the rest is history from there So one thing about this movie that bothered me was that it really didn't tie into the 101 Dalmatians movie that we all grew up with as a kid, where the Baroness has three Dalmatians that are her attack dogs, and Cruella kidnaps them, but we think, oh, and then they kind of play it as a joke, where Cruella looks at these dogs and she goes, wouldn't they make handsome fur coats? And everyone looks at her like she's nuts. And she goes, no, nah, I'm just kidding. I would never do that type of thing. And then she has, you know, we, we touched upon the dog. She has a dog. And overall, she's a dog person. She loves dogs. And she would never hurt these Dalmatians. And in the end, that's just kind of like what I was like, okay, but they portray Cruella as this like very inhumane animal killer in the movie we grew up with as a kid. So I didn't see exactly where that ties into. And I understand that Disney wants you to sympathize with this villain. So I don't know, Mike, I don't, I didn't understand that part. Well, it's a reimagining is not a direct prequel. In my opinion, it very much wants to turn Cruella very much into like an anti-hero to like a trickster where you don't know what exactly she's going to do. And I think that's important is that because when women were in film, mainly in those days in the 60s when 101 Dalmatians came out, they they were either the princess or the the evil queen. And there's no way that you could ever watch a scene and not tell who was who. With Cruella, you're watching it and she's very much a flushed out, interesting character whose motive is always a mystery. That's true. Um, so... In a way to make her kind of for them to just kind of make a joke of that i understand because no one wants to see puppies get turned into a fur coat no and there was actually a thing where she shows up to one of baroness's galas wearing a dalmatian type of jacket and the baroness goes oh my god you killed my dogs and i i was just like they didn't. They didn't take this dark turn. No, they didn't. But oh, I then they were bluff. I call their bluff. See, I thought it was real for a second. So I was just like, "Oh my god!" But <laughs> then they were just like, "Nah, just kidding." Like the Dalmatians came in like behind her, or or no, the Baroness found the Dalmatians overall. Yes. But oh my god. <laughs> but that's just that's just it. She was play Cruella. Just she would never hurt those dogs. She loves her dog. Her dog is her sidekick. So yeah, it was interesting. And one last thing I do want to touch upon is the fashion in this movie. I really liked the clothing, the clothing styles in this like Cruella style because Cruella was the look of the future. Whereas the Baroness was just making these like 1960s dresses and that's what was making her popular. But Cruella overall developed and executed these clothing styles that were very much like the future, very much like what you would see, you know, even now with different... Um, uh, well, Cruella, well, the Baroness was very much making fashion of the time in the, which the movie was set, which was the 70s. You can kind of tell by, like, the music and the slang. But Cruella seemed very much about 20 years in the future and seemed very 90s grungy, almost borderline punk rock with her fashion so it was it was a joy to see Cruella get so many different outfits and so many different looks uh in each scene and I know that Disney is going to make a ton of money selling Funko Pops and I'm sure at Comic-Con whenever it comes back (laughs) we'll be seeing half of the female 
going as Cruella and the other half going as Scarlet Witch. It's just, it's just mm-hmm. going to happen. They're, Ab- they're two different moods for sure. Abstract. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> is her clothing was very abstract. It was very like you know different. It's got like text, different colors. I I personally really like it. I'm you know I'm known to be I dress edgy sometimes, so I would wear that. So, but yeah, and. I feel like you, going back to the Funko Pops you mentioned, Mike, was the marketing for this movie is definitely good. I feel like the way Disney is trying to get this movie out there to get people to come back into the movie theater. And yeah, I mean, there's Funko Pops. I just went to Hot Topic the other day. There's like a big poster. There's merch everywhere for Cruella. And for me, going to the Disney parks, especially around Halloween, and there's special events out there that the parks have. Cruella is a big deal. When they have Cruella out for meet and greets, that line is humongous. She's just an icon for some people. I I would go to the park and meet Cruella if she was updated to look like she does in this movie. I think that would be very interesting. That would be interesting. I don't think they'll do that because they haven't done that with Maleficent. Maleficent is still very much like what you see in the original Alice in Wonderland. Or... Oh my gosh. Sleeping Beauty. Sorry, guys. (laughs) Wow, Disney fan fail. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I mean, they haven't updated to the Angelina Jolie look, so I doubt Disney will do Emma Stone. Oh, they are updating their Marvel characters every so often, so I think they should follow suit with their other franchise with, you know, marketed property. Yeah. I guess we'll see. But I feel like definitely, though, this movie will make Cruella even more popular, especially at the parks. I'm going um, around Halloween time, so we're going to do, like I said, Disney has this thing at night now called um, Crud. I can't remember. But it's a after hours party, kind of like a watered down version of Not So Scary. So I'm going to try to look out for Cruella. <laughs> I've never met her. So, so just any closing thoughts we're going to share in this movie? I would go see it. You know, I would tell people to go see it. Because if you're a Disney fan and you appreciate these movies and these characters, like, I grew up with Cruella de Vil. I grew up with 101 Dalmatians. And I always loved the animal movies, like Lion King, Bambi, anything that had animals as, like, the main character. And 101 Dalmatians was always one of my go-to movies as a kid. So I was interested in learning more about Cruella. So yeah, I would definitely, if you're a Disney fan, you grew up with these characters, go check out this movie and, you know, let me know what you think. I would say if you, if you kind of know what to expect with how Disney's been treating these uh, evil queen movies and their, their, their live action remakes, it's in the same vein of that as far as quality. I would say, though, as far as like the remakes of the classical movies go, Aladdin is still my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um... And it's, it's uh, around that same level quality. I mean, I knew what to expect, and I was satisfied, entertained watching the movie, but it really wasn't, like, much of a standout movie for me or something I would recommend that you have to see or you have to watch. But it was a fun time. Yeah. And, I mean, honestly, I did not want to spend $30 for it, and we actually had, you know, like, gift cards and stuff, so I'm like, you know, let's go see Cruella. Because I don't want to buy it and have it, like, just sitting in my library for the rest of my life, not watching it. So I think that was a good call on my part. But, you know, let me know what you think. And on that note, I hope you guys have a great week ahead. And actually, now, this next weekend, Conjuring 3 comes out. So stay tuned for that. And that's actually going to be my season finale of this podcast for season one. I will talk to you guys next week.